All right, mighty companions. Mighty companions. It is good to be here with you today. Could you acknowledge yourself for being here today? And those of you online, I want to welcome you to Facebook Live. I'm Earl Purdy. This is a course in miracles. And uh, do y'all need a miracle? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody could use a miracle. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could you, you could use a really cool expression of love. That's what it's about. Would you like to know how to do that? Yes. How to let it in. The course says all we have to do is be willing to say, what I know may not be all there is to know. Is, is that possible that you don't know everything? Yes. Would, would anybody be willing to admit that they don't know everything? Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, so let's take a minute and get and breathe and, and, and bring our energies into the present moment. And uh, if you're here for the first time, I want to welcome you to A Course in Miracles. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, what Spirit told me to do was to read the introduction, just a couple of paragraphs to the Course in Miracles. It's one of those things that I think needs to be done every now and then. And it's about a couple of paragraphs. It says, this is a Course in Miracles. It's a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will doesn't mean that you can establish the curriculums. Having free will doesn't mean you can establish what the curriculum is you're going to learn. Just like if you're going to become a lawyer and you go to college, they tell you what curriculum you're going to take. You just decide when you're going to take it. Whether you're going to be full-time, whether you're going to do it in the morning, whether you're going to do it in the evening. So that's what the course is saying. Free will doesn't mean you can establish the curriculum. There are just certain mental attitudes you're going to have to take if you're going to have inner peace. There are just certain rules of thinking that we have to have if we're going to have peace. Uh, there are certain, certain rules of thinking that we have to follow if we're going to have peace of mind. Okay, how soon you want to learn what that is, how much of that you want to learn, that's up to you. That's what it means when it says free will. Free will means that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. Everybody clear with that? This course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love. The Course in Miracles goal is not to teach you the meaning of love because the meaning of love is beyond what can be taught. The Course teaches that in a way, the way you come to the realization of what love is is by coming to the realization of what love isn't. So it says love isn't attack. Love isn't possession. Love isn't guilt. Love isn't projection. It isn't fear. It isn't blame. That's what love is not. And the Course says that it aims at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. So why are we studying A Course in Miracles? To remove the blocks to the awareness that love is in you, that peace is in you, that joy is in you. Why are we here? With, with boundless enthusiasm, obviously. <laughs> Just unlimited levels of it. Why are we here? To remove the blocks to love. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we here? To remove, <laughs> to, to, to remove the blocks to love. And do you know that love is your natural inheritance? That's what you deserve. That's what belongs to you. That's what your natural state is. And it says the opposite of love is fear. So does that mean if you are feeling fear, you're feeling the opposite of love? Okay, so the Course in Miracles is saying love does not contain fear. 
And I used to think the people that I loved were the people that I got the most angry at. Mm -hmm. And the Course is saying, nah, anger is anger. <laughs> it's not love. In that moment, I'm not expressing love to you if I'm attacking you. And I certainly would not be feeling love for you and attacking you. So there's no such thing as in this moment, I'm loving you and going off on you. <laughs> or I'm going off on you because I love you. Uh, then it says, love is all-encompassing, so it doesn't have an opposite. The course can, be, can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. If it's real, it can't be threatened. If you have a real love, it can't be threatened. Anything that's real can't be threatened. <laughs> okay, okay. It used to be I at least had to start doing the course before everybody fell asleep. Now, now all I have to say is good morning. <laughs> at least I did, you should get at least a paragraph out now. It's just, you just have too much truth in your presence. I know, I'm just, there's so much truth. So nothing unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Therein lies the peace of God, which is the peace of love. So I'm going to take one minute to get us tuned in by saying the, the thing that sums up the course, which is nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened. What? Nothing unreal exists. Say why? Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened. And nothing unreal exists. So we're going to be, uh, those of you on Facebook Live, thank you so much for tuning in, Mighty Companions. It's a pleasure to have you tuning in from all over the world with Earl. Yes, it's, we are a call for help. We are calling for help. And I heard the most fabulous acronym for help the other night at the Course in Miracles meeting. Uh, let me see it. Holy H, eternal E, loving L, presence. So help means I'm calling on a Holy, eternal, loving presence. <laughs> That's what a call for help is. It's a call for a what? Holy, eternal, loving presence to take over in this situation. Are there any areas of your life that you need a holy, eternal, loving presence? Yes. Yes. Yes, it could it, is it that relationship that you got a restraining order? <laughs> Would that be where you might need to be looking at love differently? I, I think so. So today we're going to be on page 406 in the Course of Miracles text. We're going to be in chapter 19, the attainment of peace. Oh, I need that today. Do you need some attainment of peace? Yeah, I, I want some peace. And the Course in Miracles defines peace as, as complete fulfillment, total fulfillment. So I'm going to go through the paragraph. I'm much more interested in us remembering what it's saying than how much material I cover. So I'm, I'm going to remember because the Course in Miracles says it's not about, you're not studying the Course in Miracles for knowledge. It says you're studying the Course in Miracles for peace. We're not here because we're trying to know everything. We're here because we want to have peace of mind. And it says that when you have peace of mind, then you can hear your own inner guidance. When you have peace of mind, you can hear your inner guidance. If you're in conflict, you can't hear the voice of love. You can't hear God's voice when you're in conflict. So the Course is saying, let me take you from conflict to peace to being able to hear. 
So, what, so our goal is peace. Uh, peace comes from changing the way you're looking at a situation. So we are here to learn another way of looking at it. Now, I'm going to keep it simple. Your perception is your interpretation. So the way you see things, that's your interpretation. Agree? Yes. And then it's your interpretation that's determining how you feel. So peace doesn't come from anything changing on the outside necessarily. Peace comes from a change in interpretation. And so the Course in Miracles gives you new interpretations to use in any situation that you're going through. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. Some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be startling. But it says, regardless of your reaction to it, use it. So you can, so I could, theoretically then, I could say something today, and you could have a reaction of, I don't believe that, I don't like that, that's not true, I don't understand that. That's a reaction. <laughs> and it says, regardless of your reaction, use the idea. That's all you have to do. Use the idea, even if you don't understand the idea, and the Course says the idea will show you that the idea is true. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is really simple, so it's going to be tough. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm letting you know. There's nothing more. To, it's the Course in Miracles says, simplicity is very difficult for twisted minds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first sentence says, as peace extends from deep inside yourself to embrace all the family of God, to give it rest, your peace is going to encounter many obstacles, straight up. You're trying to practice peace, it's going to encounter some obstacles. Agreed? Yes. Now, some of the obstacles you will try to impose. Mm -hmm. You are the one that's making some of your obstacles to peace. Oh, yeah. And other obstacles to my peace, which I really believe in the most, seem to be coming from elsewhere. Everybody else. <laughs> and from various aspects of the outside world. So it looks like I have some relationships that are keeping me from having peace. And it looks like I have some things that are going on in the world that seems to be keeping us from having peace. Have I said anything so far yeah. that yeah. people can't relate to? No. No. So, we, so what, so Cause and Miracle said, let me tell you straight up, as you try to do this peace stuff, you're going to have some obstacles come up. You're going to cause some of the obstacles. Some of the obstacles are going to look like they're coming from other people, and some obstacles are going to look to your peace is going to look like they're coming from things that's happening in the outside world. Yet peace will cover those obstacles. Yay. Peace will gently cover those obstacles. What does that mean? Your peace is going to extend past all the obstacles to your peace, completely unencumbered. So even though it looked like the obstacles to your peace is coming from you and from other people in the outside world, peace is still going to cover the obstacles. Peace can still keep going past any of the obstacles to peace. Yay. Yes. Yeah. The extension of the Holy Spirit's purpose, the extension of love's purpose is your peace. And the Course says, from your relationship to others, your goal, being a loving person, is to bring others gently into your peace. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't give you peace I don't have. So the first requirement, if you're going to give peace to other people, is you have to keep yours. So if I'm a person that's full of upset and conflict, I ain't going to be somebody that's bringing peace to everybody else around me. A person who doesn't know how to be loving is not going to be a person that's going to be giving love to other people. It's funny how we think we can give to other people what we don't have. 
I can't be a miserable, unhappy person thinking I'm going to meet somebody and make them happy. <laughs> and that happens a lot. <laughs> that happens a lot when you, where people are not really happy themselves <laughs> thinking that they're going to get in a relationship and then they're going to make somebody else happy. <laughs> you can't give people what you don't have. So you must keep your peace first. You must love yourself first. You must value yourself first. 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 I didn't say second, didn't say third. I didn't say you're going to value your children, and then you're going to value yourself. I didn't say you're going to value your mate, and then you're going to value yourself. The Course in Miracles says you have to love you first. And also see loving yourself is also a thrilling proposition <laughs> that brings up endless joy to everybody in, oh yeah, love myself. That's why I'm trying to get somebody, because I can't love myself. That's why I'm, no, that's why I'm on Match.com right now. And if I want it fast, I'm on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't want to wait too long. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't, isn't that beautiful with technology? You can have instant hookups. Swipe my way to success. Yeah, you can swipe, you can, you can swipe your way to success. That's or something. <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> Now, the Course of Miracles said, the extension of love's purpose from your relationship to others to do what bring others gently in is the way love is going to bring the means and goal in line. What does that mean? The peace that lies deep within you, the peace that lies within someone else, will quietly extend to every aspect of your life. I'm willing to have Peace extends to every aspect of my life. I want my peace to surround me. I want my peace to surround you. And not with just regular happiness. I don't want y'all to have just regular happiness. I want you all to have glowing happiness. Yes. Yes. Say it right there. Not the regular kind. I want some glowing happiness. Y'all want some happiness that glows. <laughs> And you also want the calm awareness of complete protection. Yes. You're not going to feel completely happy until you feel completely safe. Mm -hmm. That's why people don't tend to feel completely happy in the world. Because mm -hmm. they tend not to feel completely safe in the world. Mm -hmm. So they think they can just find someone, go in their house or apartment, mm -hmm. shut out the world, and then you got your own little personal space mm -hmm. of peace. That's the way we try to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So the Course says, you are here to carry a message of love. You are here to be a carrier. And you are here to car carry a message of safety, a message of freedom, and you're supposed to be giving that message to anybody that is drawn close to you. Yeah. So anybody that's close to you, you're supposed to be giving them a message of love, safety, and freedom. I want to tell you how much I love you. I want to tell you how safe you are. And I want to tell you how free you are. Mm -hmm. The opposite of what we do in relationships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you how free you are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm also, a lot of times, if I'm afraid, I'm watching you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got an app for that. <laughs> I trust you and I see exactly where your butt is. You stayed in 7 Eleven much too long. There was something going on more than a slush. How long does it take to get a slush? But I love you. I trust you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have a healing that's waiting for you. You have a healing that's waiting for me. And you will not wait to give that person that message of love 
and safety and freedom. Mm -hmm. For you will call to that person. That person will answer you because they'll recognize in your call the call for love. Right. Mm -hmm. My call to you is a call for love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to read about love anymore only. I want to see us take these opportunities when we're together to practice saying these things to each other and loving each other and freeing each other and being safe around each other. I'm tired of intellectual truth. Personally, I want to see you all as an opportunity for me to practice. And since most of us are not in special relationships with each other, it'd be easier to practice with each other first. Right, because we're not so invested in what each other, you're not worried about what I did last night and who I did last night. <laughs> if anybody was done. <laughs> it hasn't been really happening a lot. <laughs> Could that be why I've been having so much more peace? Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um. See, the core has got me working on a new kind of piece. So, <laughs> it takes a minute. I have, I have time to make jokes. Sometimes, sometimes people don't get my jokes about three hours after the class. <clears throat> yeah, they be like driving down the street and they go, oh. <laughs> yeah, three hours later, they get what I'm talking about. So, I want to draw you in and I want to give you rest just like the rest was given me. Spirit gives me love, spirit gives me peace, spirit gives me safety, and what I want to be in your life is exactly the same thing. I want to give you the same message that you're safe, give you the same message that you're loved, and give you the same message that you're free. That's what you do if you want to have peace with people. You just heard it. Now, did it say you blame them? No. Did it say you project on them for everything that's happening in your life that you don't like? No. Did it say you try to control them, possess them, manipulate them? No. It said what? You want to bring some glow and happiness. You want to support them feeling safe and protected and tell them that they're free, that they come anywhere close to you. You want to remind them that they're loved, that they're fully appreciated. You want to see everything that they're doing is a call for God, which is a call for love. That's what you do if you want to get past obstacles to your peace. Mm -hmm. Now, my ego, the part of me that thinks I'm wronged, the part of me that thinks I'm a victim, the part of me that thinks somebody's done something to me, it's not going to want to practice this. Yeah. It's going to want to use anger, which is nothing more than an attempt to make somebody else feel guilty. Mm -hmm. So I use anger to make you feel so guilty you do what I say. That's the way the fear-based mind operates. I'm angry, and I'm going to get you to treat me better because I'm angry. And because I'm so angry at you, now you start to be more considerate of me. Anybody familiar with that process? How's that working for you? All right, so before I go to paragraph two, are there any comments or questions about what that paragraph said you needed to do if you really want to have peace? I think the thing for me to remember is that it's, it's through the Holy Spirit's extension. Because I try to do things on my own, so I try to solve the problem with the problem. My mind is the problem, and I need that help that you were talking about. I need the Holy Spirit. Extension, That's know, right. Loving presence. That's I right. Can't do it on my own. The 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 new way is not having to do anything alone. Right. Right. The new way is through joining and connecting and sharing. The old way is trying to do it on your own right. by yourself. That's why it's important for us to learn how to have a relationship because. If I'm not going to do it by myself anymore and I'm going to do it by extending to others, then I need to know how to have relationships with others that give me peace mm -hmm. so that we can do that together. I don't want to be in a relationship with you in order to move to a peace because I think you're the reason why I don't have none and getting as far away from you as I can <laughs> is the answer to my peace. Right? right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to do this relationship thing, then I need to know how to do relationships in a way that it's joyful, safe, free, and happy. And how do I know I need to learn how to do that? All I have to do is honestly look at my own past relationships. 
If you will honestly look at your, your own past relationships, you will gladly resign as your own teacher. <laughs> so I want to invite you to resign as your own teacher. Yes, quick. Right. That's the only good giving up. That's the only good giving up. No two weeks notice. Today. Yeah, today. Not no two weeks notice. Anybody else? <clears throat> It's not even a relationship if it doesn't have a loving presence. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. They're just two bodies together under the same roof with their minds and hearts miles apart. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a relationship with you because I'm in the same physical space with you. Mm -hmm. I'm in a relationship with you if we're communicating. Mm -hmm. Really communicating. Yeah. And that's communication with the goal of joining minds and hearts. That's what it is. Anybody else before I go to the next paragraph? Trudy. <clears throat> My brother has a problem and he wants me to scream at him and help him get over it. And I, <laughs> I know what you're saying and the loving presence is what I have intended to be all this time. And so now I'm a little confused about, you know, like you said, get out of his life, just walk away or continue to be the loving presence and not expect anything in return? Yes. Stop. Yes. Yes. Stop. Yes. Continue to be the loving presence. Don't have a script for how he should react to you being a loving presence. Okay. See, that's what we do. I'm going to be that loving presence, but you better darn sure appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't, I'm going to stop being a loving presence on you really quick. Yes. That's not real giving. Real giving is not giving somebody a wedding present and then the next morning you're in their kitchen trying to make sure they use that toaster that you bought them. <laughs> now you've imprisoned them with the gift. So real giving is I'm going to give you and share the love with you and your response is your responsibility. My, my responsibility is to give the loving response. Yes. And let me give you a tip. The best way to deal with an attacking ego person is to be quiet and don't continue to talk to them yeah. until they stop attacking you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're going off on me, I'm going to stop talking to you. Mm -hmm. Because the ego angry mind needs you to constantly engage it in order for it to keep doing its thing. It wants you to keep engaging it. So what you do in the presence of an angry person is you stop talking to them. Even though your own ego is going to want to attack back and think that means you are being strong and nobody is walking all over you. But the truth is, a fearful, angry person needs you to conflict with them. And if you don't, then they can't continue to expend that energy. Now, if a person is used to using anger to get what they want, at first they may escalate their anger when you're not responding, but you still don't respond, even if they're escalating their anger. If they're not physically attacking you, you don't have to be affected by anything they're saying. i said it again. If they are not physically attacking you, there is nothing that they're saying that has to hurt you or affect you. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me was a very popular little saying when I was a kid. And there's a lot of truth in that. If you're not physically attacking me, none of your words have to affect me unless I allow them to. So it's no such thing as somebody saying something nasty to you and you have to get your feelings hurt. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. So you don't engage crazy people. I don't care how good they look. Because I have gotten involved with crazy people because of their butt. Okay. Y'all know what I mean. Tell the truth. You know what I mean. There's some people you've gotten involved with you knew they were crazy, mm -hmm. but they look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you say, well, I just take them to the courts. 
<laughs> we gonna work on this. I'm gonna bring that. I'm gonna bring him to the chorus class. <laughs> so let's go to the next paragraph. Then, if somebody, if you don't have anything else to say. <clears throat> now it says, "All this will you do? You're going to be a loving person." But it says, "Yet the peace that already lies deeply within must first expand." What does that mean? The peace that's in me must keep flowing across the obstacles that I place before the peace. Mm -hmm. So I don't care how many obstacles come up all day long, I have to still keep telling myself the truth. And the truth is, I'm the one that's choosing the way I feel. Yeah. That it will be true all day, no matter what's happening all day. Right. That will never change. It's not like in the morning it's true that I'm the one that's giving everything the meaning it has me. But in the afternoon, the truth doesn't work. <laughs> all, day, all day long, you are reacting to the meaning you're giving to everything everybody is doing. All day. Right? So the Course says, this will you do for nothing undertaken with the Holy Spirit remains unfinished. There is nothing you undertake with spirit. There is nothing you undertake with love that remains unfinished. Anything you do with love is going to come to a completion of love. Mm -hmm. And you can indeed be sure of nothing you see outside you. Everything you see outside you will change. There is nothing in your perception that is certain outside you. Mm -hmm. But the Course says what? You can indeed be sure of nothing you see outside you, but of this you can be sure. What? The Holy Spirit, the love in you, your higher teacher, ask that you offer it a resting place where you can rest in love. So what does that mean? I've got to have a resting place in love in me where I can rest in love. It's like you creating a spot on the sofa for you to be able to sit down. Right? I've got to have a place in me for love to rest in. I have to have a place in me for happiness to rest in. And every time you think your happiness depends on somebody else's behavior, you are blocking your happiness. Yes. Every time I see an unhappy person, I always say in my mind, they are saying one thing to themselves. If this were different, I'd be happy. Right. If this were different, I'd be happy. If my job were different, I'd be happy. If the weather were different, I'd be happy. If my mate was different, I'd be happy. If I was in another city, I'd be happy. Any unhappy person, doesn't matter what they're unhappy about, you can just safely, accurately assume that they're telling themselves something needed to be different outside and they'll be happy. That's why people are looking for relationships in most cases. They think if I had a different kind of relationship, I would be happy. Now, a person that's truly complete and a person that's truly happy is not praying for an unhappy person. <laughs> so you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be, the unhappy, miserable person wouldn't be like the first person on their list that they're looking for. Right? So when you say you want a brilliant partner, you want a compassionate partner, you want a smart partner, you want a spiritual partner, would a person like that want you? Would you be a big catch for a person like that? Are you loving? Are you exciting? Are you conscious? See, it's too many people that are not exemplifying the qualities of the people that they want in their lives. I'll say that again. There are too many people hoping for people to show up in their life who are, who are exemplifying qualities that they are not. I'm not a really kind, loving person, but I'm looking for somebody that's a kind, loving person to want me. Mm -hmm. I'm at a party sitting in the corner, not communicating to anybody, and I walk away and say that party wasn't a really good party. It was after you left. <laughs> They were all waiting for you to leave. And then everybody was parting off the roof. I've been in places where all of us pretended to leave so that some people could leave that we wanted to leave, and then everybody came back. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes the people who are least friendly will be the ones that will stick around and watch and see what everybody else is doing to judge them. They just want to hang around just to judge the people who are extending. So if you're wondering why your life is not exciting, why it's not thrilling, there might be a common denominator in every event in your life. Now, who is that? Let's see. Who could it be that's always there when I'm miserable? Remember, everywhere you go, you are there. <laughs> now, love answered you. Love entered your relationship. Would you not now return love's graciousness and enter into a relationship with truth? Yeah. I'm going to enter into a relationship with love. So I personally only want relationships that are a constant reminder of truth right. and love. And I don't compromise on that. I'm not going to allow myself to have intimate relationships with people who depress me mm -hmm. and who are depressing yeah. and who don't want to talk no truth and they just want to complain. I want to enter into a relationship with love yeah. and so I have to be loving myself. Mm -hmm. So the Course in Miracles says, are you ready to enter into a relationship with real love? Yes. 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 Right up there with loving yourself, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, guess what? It is love who offered your relationship the gift of holiness, which is love. It's, it's love that offers your relationship the gift of love. It's love that offers your relationship the gift of innocence, without which it would have been forever impossible to appreciate your brother. In other words, if I'm not a loving being, it's impossible for me to appreciate you. Mm. See, I appreciate the people in my life more than ever before. You know why? Mm. Because I appreciate myself more than I ever have in my life. Mm. So all of a sudden I'm noticing so much to appreciate about all the people in my life. It's the weirdest things. Like, as Earl loves Earl more, then Earl sees things that love about everybody around him more. And when Earl was putting Earl down, Earl didn't see a lot to appreciate about the people around me. So it's impossible for you to appreciate me if you're not appreciating you. And if you're not appreciating you, you need to be around people who have the same goal of appreciating themselves too so that you all can learn how to go past your blocks and appreciate each other together. I have those type of relationships. They didn't happen by accident. I freaking have been working on changing my mind for 40 years. So you don't need to take 40 years to do it because I did 40 years for you. See, the answer to doing it is right here before you. So you don't need 40 years. You just need to do what you're being told, regardless of how much you resist doing it. So. That was the next paragraph of this terribly complicated material <laughs> called A Course in Miracles. Any comments or questions about that paragraph? So what did that paragraph say? Then you're going to start wanting to get peace, but some obstacles are going to first be placed before your peace. But if you undertake wanting peace with God, love, and the Holy Spirit, you're going to succeed. There's nothing outside of yourself that you can be certain about but love is asking you to offer it a resting place within you. So I have to start loving me to allow love to have a resting place. Mm -hmm. And then from that resting place, then I can start to appreciate those around me. And what is the message I'm going to give to you if I love you? That you are safe, that you are protected, and that you are free, and that you are loved. So what do I tell my close, intimate associates? You are free. You are loved. I appreciate you. You are wonderful. You are free. I support you. Do what you want to do. I want you to be happy. That's what I tell all of my friends and intimate associates. And, the, and those people who don't want that, 
They voluntarily mm -hmm. leave my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. They will go. Now, this is what you are supposed to do. Don't run after them. <laughs> <laughs> when they go, just go, I bless and release you to your good, and I, I really want you to be happy. That's what you do. Because if you don't see how cool I am and you think you need to get away from somebody as cute and conscious as me, you have problems. <laughs> don't you think that's right, though? Think about it. If you've really been a really loving, cool person and somebody's trying to get away from you, that's a major red flag. Yeah. And if you find yourself wanting to hold on to them, that's you want to hold on to your own lack of love. Yeah. See, if, if I want somebody that's not appreciating me, what I want is to not be appreciated. Yeah. And they're very yeah. proficient at that. <laughs> there are some people that never compliment you, but they'll tell you everything they're upset about. But they won't turn around and say, I love you as quick as they'll say, I'm upset with you. Yeah. People will give you a piece of their mind in two seconds, but they won't tell you how beautiful they think you are. They'll be like, shy, too shy to say that. You know, My mama won't grab me and hug me, but she'll tell me what I'm doing wrong. And that's what we're too much like. We won't say, oh, God, you're like a blessing that's greater than anything I could have ever imagined. Just being in your presence just thrills my soul. People won't say that as fast as, you late again. <laughs> but they'll say that like that. So, any comments, brothers, sisters? Uh, please. Uh, this situation is only lacking whatever I'm not giving. That's right. So That's some right. Some of those That's scenarios right. we're doing of like at the party or if like I'm saying like I'm not getting enough love, I'm not being enough love. That's what I do. Right. I say the only thing is missing in any situation is what I'm not giving. But my ego said, yes, you are. You're giving it. They just don't appreciate you. You've been giving it. Nobody's been really appreciating you. And then the truth says, no, if I'm really giving it, I wouldn't see it as missing. You see, even if other people look like they're not giving me acknowledgement, because I feel so good about myself now, it doesn't change anything about the way I feel. I don't need validation like I used to need validation. And so when you don't need it, it's when you receive it the most. When you're the most needed, that's when it looks like nobody's around. The minute you don't think you need, you know, you got a partner. You got, always have somebody want to take you out. <laughs> you got plenty of money, then money come to you. You get a job, that's when somebody offers you another one. You, you think you don't have one, you hunt for it like it does. So, so we ought to get that as you see it in yourself, then you see it around you. So if you don't see it around you, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have the love. It just means now you know where your work belongs, which is what? I need to start right where I am and telling the people right where I am what it is I appreciate about them. The Course in Miracles says, what you don't appreciate will leave. So if you are always complaining but never appreciating, it's on a matter of time before that person or that situation is gone. So you want to get rid of somebody, just keep not appreciating them. And they will be gone. And the more loving a person is, the quicker they'll be gone. That's right. It's not just the opposite. It's not, now I'm a loving person, so you treat me like crap, and I'm going to be so much more patient with it. I'm going to stick around for a long time because I love you and you treat me like crap. No, actually it's the opposite. When I start to love myself, I will not tolerate debasement. I will not tolerate you mistreating me. I will not tolerate you not acknowledging me. Loving people don't put up with our stuff. And we are programmed to think loving means I'm going to keep putting up with the way you're treating me. No, a loving person will not put up with attack and judgment. It's only people who don't love themselves that are constantly stick with people in situations that condemn them and criticize them. When you wake up spiritually, you will not be able to tolerate discomfort as well as you used to. Because you will know you don't have to suffer. So you won't want to put up with it the way you used to when you thought it was just natural to constantly go through a lot of crap. A loving person don't operate like fearful people operate. 
And fearful people think loving people are selfish because loving people don't put up with fearful people's games. People who put guilt trips on you, you want to get rid of me quick, stop putting some guilt trips on me. I'm out of there. Try to manipulate me through guilt and see how long you see me around you. But fear-based people count on guilt to get them what they want. I'm counting on I'm going to make you feel so guilty that you do what I want you to do. When you're fear-based. So, hey, Patricia of Lungo. <laughs> um, so when you were talking about that, it reminds me that, that love cannot be present if there is sacrifice. And yet we're often taught that to be a loving person, we have to sacrifice ourselves. Anybody familiar with that? <laughs> if, if you love me, if you love me, you'll put your needs and desires Pass. And I'm not gonna, I'm not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do what you love to do if you love me. You're gonna do what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to sacrifice your happiness. That's how I know you love me. <sighs> love is not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. A father that works 70 hours a week to take care of his family because he loves his family is not sacrificing. They're doing it out of love, so it's not a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's a sacrifice if they're doing it not out of love, and they're full of resentment. So when we say love is not sacrifice, it's more of an attitude than an actual physical act. Y'all yeah. with me about that? Yeah. So sacrifice is the way I'm looking at it. Not necessarily what the physical thing is I'm doing. If I want to do it, it's not a sacrifice for me. If I want to do that for my family, it's a, I'm glad to do it. So how many times are you doing things because you should have Gotta or order, as opposed to I want to, I'm thrilled to, I'm inspired to. Somebody else? That's our hand. Yeah, so what's, what I find interesting is when you, when you sit, like where I live, when they're cooking drugs across the hall, and you put up with it and you put up with it, and they leave the door open at night. First of all, they have a VCR there to keep the door open so the drug dealers can come in and out. Then you take the, the VCR and you put it in the dumpster, right? The next thing you know, they put a television there. You take television, you put it in the dumpster. Then there's another one. You take two of them. Everybody else should carry it out. So what do they do yesterday? They take the screws off the hinge to the door so the door doesn't shut. So this morning, I said, you know what? When this guy walked out, I said, would you please close the door? <clears throat> I, he said, well, it's open. And I said, well, I heard somebody take a power drill and undo the screws yesterday afternoon. Take that. And then he had all this bullshit, lying excuses. And I'm like, you know what? All I asked you nicely to do, out of respect, was to close the door. And everybody jumped into the whole thing. It's like, I told the truth. Yeah, but you still, yeah, but, but, but you, you, the mistake you made. Was what, confronting them? Or just no, the mistake you made was, was believing that your happiness was dependent on them doing what you wanted them to do. That was your mistake. Yeah. That, that somehow your peace was dependent on them doing something differently than what they were doing. That was the mistake. Your peace didn't have anything to do with what they were doing with the dumpster. It was not nothing that they were doing that was upsetting you. You were upsetting yourself about what they were doing because of your interpretation of it. So it's still possible to ask people to do things that you would prefer without attacking yourself with anger in the process. So it's perfectly okay for me to have a preference that they put whatever in the dumpster or whatever. But the minute I made my happiness dependent on whether or not they did it, that was my error. Because whenever I set it up where my happiness is dependent on somebody else's behavior, I am setting up a premise that will take my happiness away. Because that that means I'm going to have to get everybody in the world to act the way I want them to act in order for me to have peace. That was the error, mm -hmm. was that you were making yourself mad about it. So therefore, you were attacking yourself about what they were doing because you were the only one feeling the upset necessarily. Because I was the only nice to deal the drugs. It, it, it doesn't matter what the situation is. What the course is saying is how you feel about it is coming from the meaning you're giving it and the interpretation you're giving it, no matter how justified you feel, it's still your 
interpretation that's upsetting you. There's a way to look at anything where you don't lose your peace. And we're learning how to do that. We have not completely learned how to do that if we'd already be enlightened. Okay, so that's when the person says, I must have made a mistake, I need to look at this in a different exactly. way. Exactly. Because of how I feel is letting me know I'm looking at it incorrectly. Okay, so basically put your feelings in check. By giving yourself a new interpretation of the situation. Okay. Okay, because don't forget, your, your feelings are not coming from the situation. I'm going to say that again because this is such an important point. Your feelings are not coming from what your mate's doing, your boss is doing, uh, Trump is doing, the administration is doing, the foot shut down of the government, you got laid off, you were told you had an incurable disease. None of that has to take your peace away. What's taking your peace away is the way you're looking at it. Always. Always, 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 always. No matter how justified. I'm not saying that there are not situations that can happen in the world that seem very unfair and unjust. Nobody's saying that that isn't true. What I am saying is the way you are responding is coming from you. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. I know it, it, it just seems so obvious that the pain is being caused by them. <laughs> so I know it's hard to hear that it doesn't have anything to do with them. But every time you say it has something to do with them, you've taken your power away. Right. You've taken your power away. saying that, the, the challenge is it's opposite of what we're bombarded with in the world, right? It's my wholeness or the work, the spirit on wholeness that allows me to give, to give that freedom, to give that love. Yet everything in the world says, I need this. So it's a totally different mindset of abundance, wholeness to truly give that. I was thinking of the Jerry Maguire thing, you know, um, where he's like, uh, you know, the, the, that part, the little romantic part, you complete me. I know, you know whenever I mean, somebody says you, that. Like, that's impossible. I know, I know. I can't even love you unless I, I, I know, love I know, I know, I know. You, you complete me. <laughs> uh, what happens is I'm around this person, and this person triggers me to feel a certain way about myself. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's making myself feel turned on by you. Right. You are not turning me on. When I say somebody's turning me on, it's me turning myself on about them, right? So I can say when I'm with you, I feel so happy, but that's me making myself feel happy when I'm with you. But you're not the one that's causing me to feel happy. There's nobody causing you to feel happy. There's nobody causing you to feel happy. They are triggering you to make the decision to choose to be happy with them. So I can choose to be happy with every one of you, or I can choose to be miserable with every one of you. But I'm not going to blame you for my unhappiness anymore. And if I do, and I can always tell when I'm doing that because I'm unhappy. <laughs> Just in case you want to be able to tell when you're doing it, you'll be unhappy. So now do you know the real cause of your unhappiness? Finding is coming from you. That's right. When you think anything about your happiness or unhappiness is coming from somebody or something outside of you. God, if I had to change everybody to act the way I wanted them to act before I'd feel good, I'd never feel good. <laughs> you know, because some people, they are, such, they are such great teachers. Do you know that some people absolutely would not change for you? Yes. Yes. Because they're your best teachers, because they're the one that's forcing you to look at it differently. Those people who cave and give in to your anger, and then they try to change themselves to make you happy, they are not doing you a favor. They are convincing you even more that your happiness depends on manipulating other people. It's the people who won't cooperate with you and stick to their guns regardless of how you feel. Those are the ones that's teaching you you got to change your mind. Not the ones who came because you made them get up, you because you're upset. They go, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I do what you want me to do. Please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, baby, please, baby, please, baby, baby, please, baby, please, baby. <laughs> Anybody ever handle those baby, baby, please, mama, please, baby, 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 please, baby. So what I just heard you say is a powerful tool in recognizing that those that will not change for me are the ones who are actually loving me. That's right. Mm -hmm. I need to show you that you're trying to manipulate other people is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I love you so much I'm not letting you manipulate me. Now you're going to call me selfish. 
Because you, you're going to try to use anger to get me to change for you. Which actually is you being selfish. If you want me to change for you, you're the one to just think about you. Sometimes when I, I do a lot of counseling, it's rare that someone says, I want a relationship so that I can give somebody love and peace and joy. It's usually I want to be in a relationship for someone somebody's going to give to me. Right. Not what am I going to bring into it. Well, I'm cute. That's enough. I'm doing my part. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my part. I'm cute. <laughs> And if you really look, I might give you some of my dysfunctional sex. Okay, now. <laughs> that's the best kind. That is the best kind. <laughs> I need to talk to you about that. <laughs> I need to learn more about your point of view. <laughs> yes, yeah. Since that's the kind most people have, that would be good to have a right the way to look at it, you know. <laughs> Say you're a good teacher. You want to learn how to love dysfunctional love? I'm here, baby. <laughs> I'm right here for you. I'm right here for you. All right. So, the Course in Miracles says, the gratitude you owe to love, love asks that you receive for love. And when you look with gentle graciousness upon the other person, you are beholding love. So, so when I look at you with graciousness, I'm looking at love. I love that. For you are looking where love is and not apart from love. So when I'm looking at you, I'm looking at where love actually is. If I can have the blocks removed that keeps me from seeing it. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to experience love, all of you all are love. Mm -hmm. It's just that all of my perceptions about you is keeping me from seeing it. Mm -hmm. And those perceptions are based on my past experiences. Yeah, right. And so I've got to be willing to let go of the past if I'm going to see you in a way that's going to make me feel good about you. So the Course in Miracles says you cannot see the Holy Spirit. You cannot see the love, but you can see each other truly. And the light or love in the other person will show you all that you need to see. Yeah. When the peace in you has been, what? When the peace in you has been extended to encompass who? Everyone Love's function here will be accomplished. So how will I know when I've accomplished my mission as the Holy Spirit, as, a, as love? How do I know I've accomplished my mission? How do I know when I've accomplished my mission? He says, when my peace has extended to the point that my peace surrounds all of you. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Guess what? I'm feeling peace around all of you. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not be feeling peace around me, but I can certainly feel peace around you. So it doesn't matter if you are necessarily feeling peace around me. My peace can surround you. Whew. Oh. I, I don't know about you, but isn't that great to know that all you have to do is to accept the truth for yourself? Isn't it great to know all you have to do is accept peace for yourself? Because the miracle says, people tend not to hear an answer that you're giving them unless you're telling them what somebody else needs to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, and just notice, notice that everything I've been teaching is about what? You. You need to change your perception. You need to look at things different. That's why we don't get thrilled. <laughs> because it, it's, it's not saying, yes, I'm going to tell you how to get your mama to treat you better. I'm going to tell you how to get your boss to get off your case. Then we listen. But the court says, the minute it's about, no, you need to change your freaking mind, Earl. I don't get thrilled about that. But actually, it's the only thing I have any control over is my mind. I don't have any control over your mind. I don't want my happiness to depend on you. And I'm not being cold when I say that. I don't want my happiness to depend. If you are not excited about your own happiness, I definitely don't want to make mine dependent on you. If you don't get excited about your own happiness, I certainly don't want my happiness to depend on you. You should be the main one in this room excited about the possibility of you having abundance and joy and love. You should be the most excited person in this room about the possibility of you being happy. You should 
everything excited about the idea of the young man happy. Yes. 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 That's okay. Sick people are the ones that need a doctor. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know how to love myself completely. Uh, the, the course says uh, a, a person has been starved and emaciated and they've been on the desert and they haven't had any water and they, you come up on them, you just save them, but they don't jump up and run around in a circle. Right? It takes a while for them to realize they've been saved. It takes a while for them to get to the point they can run around. That's us. Yeah. So as soon as we hear this, of course we don't jump up and down. We're the people that's been on the desert. And so we're not seeing anything yet to be that excited about. That's why I need you to be excited about me because I'm not excited about me. So I need you to be excited about me because I'm not excited about me. I need you to be excited about me, even though I'm the least exciting person. <laughs> I want somebody to be excited about me. <laughs> Please, somebody be turned on by me. I am thrilling. <laughs> Don't you want to get, take me out? <laughs> I like to go places by myself from time to time just to see who attracted to me. I just want to go, okay, Holy Spirit, you know who in this place really would be turned on to meet me right now, hang out. You see, you know who they are. I don't know. My chooser is broken. <laughs> I got a broken chooser. <laughs> Why am I running in the opposite direction from this woman? Because I'm attracted to her. <laughs> and based on my past choices, the person I'm attracted to is the first person I need to not run to fast towards. If you have a pattern of making wrong choices in relationships, how long is it going to take you to not, to get to the point you stop jumping on your attractions? And you say, I am going to have a conversation with this person. I am going to talk to this person. I want to hear how this person thinks and feels and whether we have anything in common and any purposes or goals that are like. I'm not going to, as a matter of fact, the relationship that might end up being the best relationship I've ever had in my life may be a relationship that does not start off with fireworks. Mm -hmm. mm. That may start off very calm and cool and kind of laid back and grow into something very real. Yeah. Not the one that I'm going, oh my God, I gotta have her. <laughs> 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 See, that's what I'm talking about. See, I can tell. So the Course in Miracles, I'm almost at the end of this paragraph. And so it says, what need is there for seeing then? When God has taken the last step, when love has taken the last step, the Holy Spirit, which is love, will lay, will gather all your thanks and gratitude that you've offered to love, lay all those thanks and gratitude gently before love's creator in the name of you. So what, so what does that mean? That, that love is going to gather all of the thanks and the appreciation that you've been giving and it's going to lay that gently before you and gently before everybody else. And all the love and all the thankfulness that you've been given is going to be accepted in the name of God. And what need is there for seeing in the presence of the gratitude of love? If I am only seeing things to be grateful for, mm -hmm. there's no need for me to judge anymore. Mm -hmm. Because all I'm experiencing is full appreciation. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so blessed by you. It's such an honor to be in your presence. You're not doing anything to make me unhappy. You've never done anything to make me unhappy. Nobody's ever done anything to make me unhappy. Nobody's ever done anything. Well, wait a minute, I can tell you, my father, let me tell you what my mama did. Da, 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 da. Same thing is true. Yes, those situations may have happened. But if you're still making yourself feel unhappy about something that's over, it's you that's carrying that around and you that's keeping yourself feeling unhappy. Because that situation isn't happening right now. If my father abused me and smacked me upside the head, right now my father is not in the physical body. Right now my father is not smacking me upside the head in this room when I'm still up here talking to you. So right now I have no reason to be unhappy. My father isn't beating my butt now. 
So stop talking about what happened to you in the past as a justification for keeping yourself unhappy right now. Yep. Stop using what happened to you in your past relationship as a justification to make yourself believe you can't have a loving relationship right now. And don't treat the next new person that you meet and see them as if they're the last person that you were with. They're not the same person. Don't treat me like I'm all the men that you knew before. I'm not your last boyfriend. Don't treat me like, don't mistrust me because your boyfriend was not trustworthy. I'm not your past. So every time you meet, <clears throat> meet someone new, remind yourself, <clears throat> they're not my past. So I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt. Until they've actually shown me that they're untrustworthy, I'm going to love myself so much that no matter how they treat me, I know I'll be okay. See, I don't mind taking a chance on love because I know that I can recover. Mm -hmm. nice. <clears throat> I know I can recover. So I'll take a chance on the next person. Mm -hmm. I'm whole and complete. My happiness doesn't depend on you, so I'll take a chance. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, take a chance. They're not the same. They're not. You changed. It must be said something good. I'm strangling. I'm going to die right here. <laughs> 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 Yes, Chris. Oh, no, I'm just stretching. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a new day. <laughs> okay. Any questions, any comments before we complete? Thank you. I fully appreciate you. Oh. oh I fully appreciate you, too. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a quick review at the end. So right now, let's do the financial expression of appreciation. Let's do the love offering. And um, hey, y'all, thank you for sharing with me. I'm a full-time teacher, and I appreciate your generosity and your appreciation more than my words can say. <clears throat> uh, I have really been accepting the truth at, at a level beyond anything I've ever done before. And my ego, the part of me that thinks I don't deserve to be happy, it's been really trying to create physical discomfort to make me think it's not okay. So don't forget, if you have any kind of sickness, any kind of pain, it's just a trick to try to make you forget that you are an innocent, powerful child of God. How can you be an unlimited being if you're about to strangle to death in front of the class? <laughs> so the purpose of the upset is to make me think everything I'm saying isn't true. And so if I tell you that you are loving and you don't believe it, you are purposely form relationships that will cause you pain so you'll be right, even though you're miserable. <laughs> so <clears throat> don't ever want to be right when you're miserable. If you're miserable, whatever area of your life that you're miserable in, if there's an area, please don't want to be right in that area. <laughs> you want to go, my financial situation sucks. I hope I'm wrong about everything I believe about my financial situation. You know, I've gone in relationships that were loving that had not happened. I hope I'm wrong about the way I look at relationships. That's what you want to say in any area that you're unhappy. You want to go, I hope that I'm wrong and I want another way to look at it. I hope that I'm wrong, and I want another way to look at it. I hope that I'm wrong. And you might be saying it all day one day. I hope I'm wrong about you. I hope I'm wrong about you. I hope I'm wrong about you. And then I look in the mirror and go, I hope I'm wrong about you. All right? And so I do three Facebook Live classes on Facebook Live. And uh, it's an Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Tuesdays at 730, I do the Way of Mastery Mountain Time. If you haven't seen the Way of Mastery, you need to check it out. And then Thursdays, I do what I call Hardcore Course in Miracles for Course in Miracles students who just want to get a better understanding and take advantage of my almost 40 years of teaching and learning it. Then on Sundays, we have our live presentation. And so I would, I would appreciate, I appreciate you all coming because there wouldn't be any point in me doing a live presentation here if there was nobody to do here. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so you are very fully appreciated because y'all are really cute. I attract cute students. I really do. That's always been the case, and it's still the case. You have no idea how cute y'all look. All right. You really are. You really are. 
especially you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. Clarity Sessions. There's a reason you were born and there's a purpose you're here and you have a function and you have talents and you have gifts. I can use my knowledge of the Course in Astrology and Numerology to make you aware of what you're here for. Because that's the question most people ask. What are, what are my gifts? What are my talents? What am I here for? What would be my easiest path through life? We are given that guidance when we're born. But we're in a culture that doesn't teach us to value psychic, intuitive knowledge. We're in a culture that teaches us that it's only what you learn through your left brain, reasoning, mind that's valuable. Instead of you have psychic abilities, you have intuitive abilities. So I'm available for anybody that wants to go deeper. And so go to my website, earlperdy.com. Those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, just go to my website, earlperdy.com. There are hundreds of classes online that you can listen to. There are audios you can download. I have hundreds of classes on YouTube. I give what I do freely, except I don't do my clarity sessions that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yeah. They, re they require an investment on your part. And that's cool. So regardless of your financial situation, there's advice and support you can get. So there's no excuse. There's no, and I, please join with somebody who's enthusiastic about changing their experience. <laughs> A study buddy will, make, will speed you along so fast it will blow your mind. Yes. Just one other person that y'all go, let's once a week, let's read together if it's just an hour. Yeah. You'll watch your whole reality change. You watch your whole reality change. <laughs> you watch your whole reality. <laughs> Play taps. All right. Here we go. Carry the message of love. Carry the message of safety. Carry the message of freedom. So you want to tell the people that you love, say, I free you, 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 I free you. You are safe. You are safe. You are free. this to yourself. I feel the love of God shining in me now. I feel the love of God shining in me now. I feel the love of God shining in me now. I feel the love of God shining in me now. And I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm never upset. So what does that mean? I think I'm upset about what this person is doing. But what's really got me upset is how I'm seeing it. I think I'm upset because of my financial situation. But what I'm really upset about is how I'm seeing it. I think I'm upset because of what happened on the job yesterday. But I'm really upset because of how I am seeing it. So what do I tell myself? What can you tell yourself? Tell yourself this. Everything is for my own best interest. Everything is for my... Who will say that with me? Everything is for my own best interest. Everything is for my own best interest. Everything is for... You mean losing that job? Everything is for my... You mean that relationship breakup? Everything is for my own best interest. Everything is for my own best interest right now. I love you, mighty companions. Give it up for you. Come on. Give it up. Can I get a little appreciation? Can I get a little appreciation? I've worked. I've 
I'll twerk, I'll twerk for you. <laughs> I love y'all. Hugs out of Delaware. Hugs out of Delaware. See you next time. Those mighty companions online, I love y'all so much.